So in a few months here, I'm turning 33 years old, which honestly doesn't seem real. Like the last 10 years of my life have been this crazy fast whirlwinds where I've bounced between more careers than I can keep track of. I've traveled the world, dated all different types of girls, started businesses, built houses, sold houses, moved more times than I can remember. And it's funny because looking back, you know, I have had a lot of wins and a lot of cool experiences, but really it's the losses and the struggles that have made me who I am today. And that's why I want to talk about in this video a few things that I think every man needs to experience in his lifetime in order not just to like live your best life, but to find out what you're truly made of and figure out who you want to become. So my first girlfriend, Met her when I was like 23, 24. Y'all know before that, very limited success with girls. I met her at a bar, approached her. She happened to be someone I had a class with back at Boston University. We started dating casually. She became my girlfriend. And about nine months in, it ended. It was one of those things that I knew, like she wasn't gonna be the girl that I married. I was kind of losing attraction for her, but she was the one who broke up with me, right? I still was too afraid to pull that trigger because I had never had a girl who cared about me like that. And when she did it, at first I was like, ah, not a big deal. I was kind of going to break up with her anyway at some point. And then a week passed. And then two weeks passed. And then all of a sudden I started feeling all of this intense pain that, oh my God, a girl's never cared about me like that before. And now she's gone. And I'm not going to be able to find another girl like that who cares about me. And of course, I started reaching back out to her, trying to get her back, trying to hang out with her. And so much respect to her. She denied all of those attempts and it put me in a very dark place for months where i thought i was gonna die alone and that was that heartbreak bro it is fucking painful but guess what the period after that where i had to claw my way out of this depression was probably the single most important period of my life because little by little i learned i can rely on myself for happiness just by making progress in my career and sticking with my fitness routine and hanging out with my buddies and little by little I had to dig deep to get that courage back to get that confidence back to start talking to girls again and asking them out and that's what I truly became a self-reliant man who knew even if times get tough like I can figure this out and look bro I know there's a lot of y'all out there who have been avoiding relationships because you're afraid of that pain of heartbreak maybe your parents had an awful relationship and you don't want anything to do with it maybe you've been bombarded by all this red pill content and you're sure she's just gonna cheat on you and it's gonna be painful and you're not gonna be able to handle it guess what it is gonna be painful but you're also gonna have some awesome experiences along the way and I'm not saying just to go throw yourself at every girl out there to find a girlfriend no but when the opportunity presents itself don't hide from it because even when that breakup happens it's actually gonna supercharge your growth or if you're in a relationship right now and you've been thinking I don't know, maybe I'll break up with this girl. I know she's not the one. Well, bro, it is time for you to rip off the band-aid and pull the fucking trigger and stop being so afraid of the pain and stop being so afraid that you're gonna die alone because guess what? This is the step you need to take to take your life to the next level. You just gotta get past the pain period. So as y'all know, my first career job was a software engineer. And when I got that job, something I had was status. I felt like I was successful compared to all my peers. 22 years old, software engineer. And when I quit that job a year later, guess what? I became a personal trainer. And now I didn't have status. If anything, I had negative status. And when I started a YouTube channel and I was uploading YouTube videos with nobody even watching them, I had even less status than negative status. Like I was the guy my peers were looking at feeling pity for but the process of letting go of that status it's what finally allowed me to be free of my ego and stop caring what other people thought of me and stop needing other people's validation because I put myself in a position where I knew I wasn't cool and I couldn't even tell myself a fake story in my head to make myself believe I was cool so here's my challenge for you bro all of us have something from our past that gives us validation. Maybe you're a really good athlete or you're really good academically or you have a really good job and that's something that you've been able to like lean on to, to make yourself feel good about yourself. I'm challenging you to finally let go of that shit and do the thing that you've been wanting to do but you've been afraid of doing because you don't wanna start again from scratch. Like unless your first job was your dream job which doesn't really happen, chances are You've been hiding from that thing. Like consciously turn yourself in to a loser. Embrace the loser mentality and then build yourself back up step by step and you will have a confidence that no one can ever take from you.
workout complete. You know something that's even better than making external muscular gains? It's when you make internal health gains. And that's why I wanna give a big thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. Check it out, bro. AG1 by Athletic Greens is much more than a greens powder. It is a nutritional drink that makes it very easy to simplify my entire health routine because it has 75 different ingredients in there, including probiotics, vitamins, minerals, superfoods, and more. Personally, I love what it can do for my digestion and absorption. AG1 contains naturally occurring enzymes that bolster the digestive process, supporting your metabolism and enhancing nutrient absorption. Not to mention the immunity benefits that it derives from its ingredients like vitamins, vitamin C, zinc, and healing mushrooms. And honestly, the best part is the convenience factor. All it takes is eight ounces of water, one scoop of AG1, once per day, that's it. And because Athletic Greens is sponsoring today's video, you know that they're hooking it up. If you go to athleticgreens.com slash howtobeast and make your first order, they're gonna throw in a free one year supply of immunity supporting vitamin D as well as five free travel packs. Just click that first link in description to level up your daily health routine. So something I was definitely not prepared for when I got that first job as a personal trainer is that in order to make money, I had to physically approach people who were working out and then like convince them to buy training from me. And this was at like a luxury Equinox level gym. So I had to convince people to pay like two or $3,000 to train with me. And that was my first sales experience, man. It made me super uncomfortable, but I had to figure it out or else I would not make a living. And since then I've become aware that basically everything in life is a negotiation. If you have a job interview, you're negotiating the terms on which you're gonna start working there or not. If you have a date, flirting is basically a negotiation. And I used to think that I was a good negotiator because if someone told me something was $300, I'd be like, hmm, what about $200? That's not negotiating, bro. That's just asking for a lower price. I've also learned that nine out of 10 people are not comfortable negotiating and have no fucking clue what they're doing. So if you become comfortable with that, all of a sudden, you're always in the driver's seat. And the funny thing is, everyone thinks they need to sell their self on the interview or sell their self to that girl or sell the product that they have, but that's not really how it works. High-level negotiators are very good at getting to know the other person and getting them to express their wants and needs and usually allowing the other person to dictate the terms of the deal. Because a lot of times, you know, I'll be talking to an agency I wanna work with or an influencer and I'm ready to pay, let's say $2,000 for a certain service, but if I ask them, you know, what, what would you be expecting for this? They might say, oh, I just want a thousand dollars. But it's also important to me that I get this and maybe that other thing's not really that big of a deal to me. So I just saved myself a bunch of money by letting them negotiate. And that's why I think every man needs to work a sales job at some point, because unless your actual livelihood depends on it, you're probably not gonna learn these negotiation skills. So that could be becoming a personal trainer, getting your real estate license, trying to sell houses. It could be working as a car salesman. And the point is not to work this job for the rest of your life. The point is that once you build this skill set and you're comfortable negotiating, the rest of your life's gonna be easier, whether you're trying to start a business, date, doesn't matter. Bro, I'm out here doing backflips in a thunderstorm. I saw some lightning over there a second ago. Hope y'all appreciate the lengths I'm going through to keep a dope video flow on a day that's not so dope. I don't even sweat it. I love you guys. I'm, I'm honestly enjoying myself out here. So for a large part of my life, I was in what I'd consider the loneliness phase. I did not have any female companionship. At times, I felt very down about that. I, I felt like I was not sure I was ever gonna have that female companionship. And even though there was a lot of pain associated there, I think it also taught me to kind of live on my own and operate on my own and there's some value there. Then I've had several relationship phases. Julia's my third girlfriend now, so I have been in a committed relationship phase for the last five years now, which seems like a long time, but not long compared to how lonely I was. And during that phase, not only, you know, hopefully are you with an awesome girl that, that you have a future with, but girls subconsciously will test your insecurities. When you're having a bad day, they're gonna poke at you in just the wrong ways. The same way that we, we likely do this to our partners as well. It's kind of human nature when we have someone's love to abuse it a little bit and it's not a healthy thing. But but if you learn to, to meet those challenges with strength, that can help you really learn how to be a much more grounded, calm man. That's one of the hardest things to do, to be honest. My first couple of relationships and a lot of times with Julia, you know, I failed in those moments and lost my cool, but, but it's a constant learning experience. You got the loneliness phase, you got the relationship phase, 
And the other important phase is what I call the player phase. So after I broke up with my, my first girlfriend and I built myself back up, I went on a tear for a long time until I got in my second relationship. And then the same thing happened after that. I went to a long tear before I met Julia. And as a lot of y'all know, these can be a lot of fun. You can meet a lot of different girls. You can level up your confidence a lot, throw yourself in a lot of different situations during the day, at night. And it can be awesome. And I think if a man does not experience the player phase ever, you'll always live life with a certain level of curiosity that will likely bring a level of resentment to any relationship you're in because you're, you're worried that you're miss out do you missed out and the point i'm trying to make here is that i believe every man should experience each of these three distinct phases not just in order to live a fulfilling life but also in order to know which one do you prefer at this point in time none of them are right or wrong but ask yourself now have there any of these phases that i've avoided out of fear out of insecurity and if so it's probably time to seek out that phase in order to elevate and levitate and advance as a man Check it out, check it out, check it out, what we got here. Woo! Oh my God. Did me and Julia just become professional pizza makers? This is a perfect circle. It's a hamburger pizza right here. There's a brother man right here. I'll be honest, we got the, we got the Trader Joe's, the Whole Foods pre-made cheese pizza and added ground beef. Don't blow up our spot. I don't like a seven out of 10. I think our homemade ones are better. Eight out of 10 is a whole package. This is better than anyone that, that we've done. I'll, I'll be honest with y'all. It's honestly sad how just weak and afraid society has made us as men. You know, I know so many guys who are, they don't even get on online dating because they're afraid they're not gonna get any matches and their feelings are gonna get hurt. I was so afraid to approach girls for years because they might say no and I might feel worse about myself. And a lot of the things we talked about today are to help us overcome our inner bitch so we stop getting in our own way. You know, for example, going through heartbreak once to prove to yourself you can build yourself back up or intentionally choosing to do something that forces you to lose all of your status so you can separate yourself from caring what other people think. And this might sound funny, but I think maybe the most important thing every man needs to experience is falling on his face on a daily or at least a weekly basis by intentionally doing things that are gonna cause you to fall on your face. So for example, I made the rule for myself back in the day that I had to approach one girl every single day, whether it was just at the gym or the grocery store, just so I could get used to falling on my face so no longer was I so afraid of it. Or even recently, I forced myself to learn how to backflip because it was something that I was afraid of doing. And at first, y'all saw, I fell on my face repeatedly. I got so nauseous the first day I tried to figure it out that I had to lay down for like three hours afterwards. Another great one is cold showers. I love taking cold showers every morning because I mean, you're not gonna fall on your face, you could get hurt, but it's gonna be a bad experience and you intentionally do it anyway. The point is when you make it a regular occurrence in your life to, to fall on your face and have to figure things out, well now, like when it actually matters and you actually see a girl you really wanna talk to or you have a really big opportunity in your career, no longer are you paralyzed that you might fall on your face because you know if you fall on your face, it's gonna be all good and who cares anyway? Like that's the only real hack to build true confidence in yourself. I feel like that was a real good video, man. I forgot to film the outro, but I just finished editing it. That was, I, I enjoyed this one. I hope y'all enjoyed it as well. If you made it to the end of the video, hit that thumbs up button. Seriously, it helps the channel out. If you're new, go ahead, click subscribe and turn notifications on because I drop two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly.